So I hope everyone enjoyed their holiday or those that were, that were in the United States. I'm sure the people in the United Kingdom are probably thinking, what are you talking about? We never had a holiday while you guys were out partying. Well, mm. in the US, you like to kind of just make up holidays as you go. And I like to adopt them and enjoy them. Just make up holidays? It's for laborers. We are laborers. Oh, we are? We labor. This is labor? This is labor. <laughs> Yeah, I needed a break from this. <laughs> this holiday, on la this label is really taking. I, I do think we just threw this holiday in there. I do. I really believe that. I it was just like, eh, let's just give it. A, I think this should be no. Labor Week, Labor Month. <laughs> we need. If there's nothing more that I need than a day off from this holiday on label, Jason, it's a week off. <laughs> it's it's a exactly month what I need. Off. But uh, while there was a week off from the Premier League and most other European leagues, um, it meant that the European break, uh, sorry, the World Cup qualifying break happened, which is something that I'm strongly against. I think we just get a taste of the competitive Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, and it's just ripped away from us, and we have to sit and watch unbearable games like Spain versus Liechtenstein, in which they devour <laughs> them 8-0. Uh, Spain out have outscored Liechtenstein, I believe it was 27-0 before that game. So you do the math, Jason, 27 plus 8. Carry the three plus the five. 35 zero. You have a very strange way of computing. <laughs> 30, so they are, uh, they, they are comfortable in their qualifying. But uh, that's not what I wanted to talk about first. The first thing that I wanted to address is there is apparently match fixing in the uh, FIFA World Competition. And I know you guys have probably just choked on whatever food you're eating in shock that any FIFA World Competition could potentially have corruption. Right. It's just completely unfathomable. It's unexpected. But according to uh, El Salvadorian officials and uh, members that are, uh, that are associated with El Salvador, they were uh, asked to throw the game against Canada. So there's this quote we want to throw to first. And by the way, this isn't just uh, on this side of the pond. It apparently was happening with uh, England's game versus Slovakia as well, but we'll get to that in a minute. First quote. It's the most dramatic thing in football I've seen for some time, investigative journalist Declan Hill told BBC World Service. The entire team came in with their coaches and said they had been approached on Saturday. They played an 11-minute conversation with the attempted match fixer. He was offering each player a variety of money per minute, depending on the result they could get. Uh, the most they would have got for allegedly fixing the match would have been about 3,000 per player. That Take the money! That sound like a lot of money. Take the money! <laughs> so, Take the money and run! So El Salvador could not qualify for the World Cup, um, but Canada needed to win this game to order to get through. So here's the thing. First of all, if you need to pay someone in order to get into the World Cup, especially playing against El Salvador, no offense to El Salvadorians, but if you can't beat them, then you don't deserve a place in the World Cup. I thought that was like the, 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 the top thing on the docket to get into the World Cup was find way to bribe. Well, into World Cup. That's how you get it? I thought that's how you get in. That's how you get the competition, Jason. They You're talk about up. one of 10 games played so far for World Cup qualifying, groups of six teams. Uh, there's like a, it's like a 10-game qualifying, mm -hmm. right? It seems like it's a 1,000 games. So just pay your way. You know, if you're a, if you're a, a Georgia, for example, just say, eh, just five grand. We'll let you in. If the You're going to get beat down in the, in the actual World Cup group stages. If the competition is going joking, to Qatar. I'm joking, by the way. Constantly sarcasm throughout this entire clip. Match fixing is wrong. If, if, if the competition is going to be in Qatar in a couple of years and it was there because of uh, money being handed in to certain people, then this is what you're going to get. People are going to try to buy it their way like to the competition. FIFA's doing the right thing here, though. Because FIFA has confirmed that they are investigating. I'm not sure what that means. However, at least it's not, this headline isn't World Cup qualifying, El Salvador, quote, refused to bribe, refused bribe to fix match, FIFA doing nothing about it. That's what you would think. Yeah. But no, it seems like they're at least, I'm not sure what the details of their investigation will be. However, I was telling you before the clip started, how is it that it, at, at this point, right, you can't get away with anything? Like, and besides, there was a recording. Like, you can't get away with anything. Mm. There's going to be recording. Information's going to get leaked. The person who tried to bribe El Salvador to throw the match, did they really think they were just going to get away with it, that no one would find out that this wouldn't be the substance of a story across media outlets across, uh, on the Internet, like, the day after it happens? Yeah, and if they're not seeing, like, American Hustle, there's plenty of other ways to try and bribe the person rather than just picking up a phone and telling them. There's plenty. Of, I'm sure FIFA, of all people, are well aware, though, of every sing single way you what could try and bribe another person. Whatever happened to the suitcase full of cash? No, that's what Whatever happened expecting. to it? And then, if I, in my mind, this is just playing out as a very over-the-top but obvious movie where FIFA would come in and be like, it's all right, El Salvador, we've got this. And they would just pick up the cash. And, and walk, walk out. out. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll, we'll take care of this. 
This will go into our, 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 our office with all the findings and it's going to be stored away. Either way, this wasn't the only one, Jason. Uh, uh, Slovakia played England uh, in what was an expected game. I did a clip on that. You can check that out where I talked about how um, you can't expect England to devour teams anymore. Just expect a 1-0 win to be a good result, whether the other team had 10 men or not. But a Slovakian defender, not Martin Skirtle, who was sent off, um, has alluded to the, the possibility that the referee may have been in on uh, some sort of match fixing in order to, to weaken Slovakia so that England could go forth and win the game. He basically stated, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, is that uh, there's only one place in the competition and England are always going to be preferred over Slovakia. Even the referee probably realised that. I would not be surprised if he was in on it. We were playing against more than just England out there. So I have my thoughts on this. Uh, Martin Skirtle delivered many more tackles throughout the game that could have potentially been uh, given a yellow card. And some mm. other players on both sides were uh, getting pretty hard on tackles that should have been um, given uh, caution at least. But the referee decided to send him off for an alleged stamp. And it's kind of a little hard to see. It did look like he stamped on Harry Kane. Harry Kane himself said, and, I, and this is the way Harry Kane would say it for me, um, yeah, he stepped on me ankle. <laughs> but I felt it a little bit. But it wasn't enough. To hurt me. And then uh, the referee obviously decided to take action on this matter because uh, Harry Kane's word is Bible. But either way, I don't see this holding as much weight. Like, it's not as obvious as, as a match fix and example as you've seen in the past. So I, I, I think that the Slovakian defender on this instance is just kind of clutching at straws. It's a great headline, though. It is. That's why it's in there, because Harry Kane was discussing the matter in the first place about the stamp and your uh, impression... One of your better impressions, actually. Well, it's easy to do, Harry Kane. I've, when I'm in my improv class, they, they encourage you to do more kind of dullish characters because it's funner to play, and he just comes to my head. Like him, Rio Ferdinand, they're all almost cut from the same pack in the way they talk. Like, if they weren't footballers, they're definitely not rocket scientists. Well, I forgot, who was it, too, that said uh, that God must have blessed David Beckham because anybody with a voice like that needs to be as good-looking as David Beckham. I think Beckham. it might have been Ali G. <laughs> but the, Joel, Ali yeah, G. the Joel Dio always references Harry Kane when it yeah. comes to He's like, talking to a spade. And um, there was a video <laughs> that Copa 90 put up when Harry Kane reacts. <laughs> Harry Kane reacts to his FIFA rating, and the actual thumbnail was Harry Kane like this. The rest of World Cup qualifying, Spain demolished. I mean, 8 nothing, And uh, I do love how Diego Costa scores goals the week after he blasts the entire <laughs> Spanish media. Yeah. If he played for Real Madrid or Barcelona or any of the Spanish teams, he never would seek credit. He never would find criticism mm -hmm. from Spanish media pundits. However, they rip into Spanish league players yeah. as much as they rip into Diego Costa. Diego Costa might be a crazy person anyway, which is a good thing, because crazy Diego Costa, actually, when he channels that on the field, on the pitch, it's good for Chelsea, it's good for Spain, it's dangerous for everybody as long as he keeps his elbows and, and feet to himself. Other than that, Gareth Bale, which I did watch the Wales match, uh, tied second place for Welsh goal scoring. He's going to go down as the greatest Welsh player, probably, of all yeah, time. Undoubtedly. It's just a nice realization that anytime you're in a foot race with Gareth Bale, you're probably going to lose that foot race. And there was a mistake in the midfield. Uh, Wales got the ball right back to Bale because they play into his strengths, which mm -hmm. I love. They don't try to sugarcoat it. They know who's going to be finishing those goals most of the time, and it is. And Joe Allen played well, too, actually, to give him a quick shout-out. And Bale just like, stormed up the park. Stormed up the park. Yeah. It, it, it's a good thing to see Wales kind of just use the Euros Continue. as a springboard forward. Yeah, like, absolutely. It, it wasn't just a one hit. Um, and it's it's encouraging, and I think you're on point. They do, uh, other teams try to use utilize their players' strengths a little too much. Like Ronaldo World Cup 2014, Portugal tried to look for him far too often oh, right. and didn't adhere to the other strengths that they had, whereas in the Euro 2016, they realized we've got a strong back line. We're a strong, tight-knit tight, uh, tight -knit unit. We're going to use Ronaldo when we have to to utilize his talents, and that worked very well for them. Wales... They understand that Bell can't do everything. And when Bell started to drop a little too deep in games, um, he, did, he, he did it a little bit too much against Belgium for my liking. Mm -hmm. But then when he actually utilised his talent out wide, that's how, how they got their goal. And I think that's how they, right. they, they go on to better things when they use him when he needs to be used. Because Played, you don't want him to waste his energy dropping a, too it's deep. It's a simple strategy. Play your strongest player to his biggest strengths. Mm -hmm. Don't try to make his weaknesses into strengths. It's not going to work out. Yeah. And in Bell's case, he's blindingly fast. He's great with the ball on his feet. And just watching him play again... God, he's a great hometown hero for Wales. It's a good team to root for. I like Wales a lot. Lastly, in the World Cup matches that I watched, I watched a lot of World Cup stuff this weekend. Uh, was Croatia. Team, what the hell happened to Croatia? No idea. Because uh, they, they drew against Turkey, which is actually going to be, I mean, there's 10 matches in World Cup qualifying. Are Croatia going to go through? Yes, yeah. of course. Uh, however, uh, 
they only could find the goal via penalty. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they just were off their mark on like the post. It felt like a bad FIFA match. Do you know when you play and every single shot hits the post? Yeah. And well, it, every and single awesome. cross in from Rakitic or Modric, who looked again fantastic, and Pian, Pian, Pianic. Pianic, thank you. Um, the midfield still look great, but I still think they have a lot of problems on both ends. Look, outside, they, outside of their midfield. They're, they remind like a, me a li- they're like a seesaw. They remind me a little bit of Belgium, <laughs> the way that they've got so much talent and they, they're on the cusp of greatness and Belgium are still on that cusp. They just lost to, to Wales again years. in the Euros, <laughs> so they've still got all the talent. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't worry too much about Croatia. Turkey are a pretty hard team sometimes to break down, and I Crunching think that Croatia tackles. will go forward um, and yeah. eventually hit that potential. The other team I wanted to go back to to kind of wrap up is Spain. Spain. I watched that game at uh, the first half, it was 1-0. Um, so then when you score seven goals in the second half, you obviously had some, there were some harsh words said in the changing room. Uh, they have a new manager, they have a new system. It's almost weird to watch Spain uh, without Iker Casillas in goals. They've mm-hmm. now got De Gea, it's going to be the, the generation of De Gea. There's no doubt that he's going to be the starting goalkeeper. Um, no Iniesta, no Javi, none of the, the usual suspects you, so that you would expect to see. Now they have the younger breed coming through. It's Thiago, who's going to play in that number 10. Uh, Koke in the middle of the park and their attacking threat Diego Costa uh, back into contention up top and he, he obviously he was the one that, that, that scored that that crucial goal in the first half just to kind of give them a little bit of a cushion even though they weren't playing as well but I was listening to the commentary and a lot of people are just far too pessimistic when it comes to Spain it's going to be a work in progress when you move away from uh, Vicente del Bosque uh, or Vincent, whatever you want to pronounce his name that system that has relied on so much quality players a new breeds coming through it's going to take a little bit of time. When you bang in seven goals in the second half, I'm sure you'll look a little bit confident going forward. And then you've got um, some almost unmatched quality in the midfield that just needs to find a way to play together. When David Silva is at his best, there's no better playmaker in the world, I don't think. When you find him in that space, uh, as Manchester City have been doing recently, and when you get him in that pocket, he's a dangerous player to deal with. And I think when you get him... Uh, linking up with your Nolitos and with your uh, Diego Costas. Adorizes. They're going to be a good team going forward. Yeah, and you, you've got Adarisa come on off the bench as well, who's getting on a little bit but can still combine. So I think things are looking up for Spain. People are just a little bit too pessimistic in the first half, and that is expected when you're playing Liechtenstein and uh, a team that rarely has uh, talent that comes close to Spain and you're only beating them 1-0 at half. People are going to panic. But under a new system and a new coach, I'm sure they'll be fine. I think so too. I'd like to see Spain get back into their World, their World Cup challenging ways. They're a yes. Fun, a lot of people said they weren't a fun team to watch. I enjoyed watching them. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Were Spain exciting to watch? Were you impressed with Wales, Gareth Bale, other things that rhyme with ale? Uh, and make sure to hit us up on Twitter, Francis underscore Maxwell, Jason Rubin 91. We'll see you guys soon. Come on.